Hey everybody, Gabby here, and welcome to today's episode of A Battle A Day. Please don't forget to uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like this video and want to subscribe to my channel. Now for today's slash this week's A Battle A Day, we're gonna be taking a look at the RVGC Cup results and teams that did well because it shows a very interesting shift in the metagame that I think we'll be seeing more of as we go into Players' Cup 3. Um, invites for Players' Cup 3 have not been sent out yet, but the TCG peeps just finished their qualification month which means we'll probably be getting those invites out within a couple of weeks so it's important to just keep an eye on the metagame and keep an eye on what's doing well at tournaments for that reason and honestly i i saw some things in this top 16 that i wasn't really expecting which is very interesting um, the first thing I'd like to point out from this top 16 cut before we start talking about the team that I've chosen to highlight in particular, and uh, shout outs to the Golden Cosmos for pointing this out, but this is the second tournament in a row that has not had an Incineroar win, which is something that is very rare in VGC, and I think that's worth calling out. The other thing that I want to call out is that the first, second, third, and fifth place teams, in addition to the uh, ninth place team, were all running Sun variants, which is also something interesting. Uh, I think we first saw Sun do well at a tournament back in the Women's Cup, what was that, like a month ago now, uh, with Elisa's team. And I think a lot of these teams have sort of taken what she has done and put their own spin on it, which is kind of cool. And I'm looking to do that myself, but I saw, uh, and I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce this, a CMLs uh, team, which ended up placing first. And I looked at it and I was like, yeah, you know, I'd probably run something like that. Since it's a really interesting mix of... Uh, Groudon and Charizard and Venusaur for your Sun mode, and then you have Porygon 2, Grimmsnarl, and Glastrier as a slower, like, Trick Room mode. Now, I'm not sure that I'm going to end up liking all of these sets or all of these Pokemon the way they are in particular, but this is going to be where we start for the month. Um, I do also want to try and build a Calyrex Ice team before the season ends because I think that's neat. And I just really like Calyrex's big noggin. It's just been growing on me as of late. So we'll get to that when I get to that. But for now, let's take a look at uh, CML's team. So the interesting thing about this team, if you've been looking at the graphic and not looking at my face, is the fact that the Groudon has an assault vest, which is something that is very, very unique. So the moves itself make sense when you think about, uh, you know, having decent coverage on a Groudon. You have Precipice Blades for that ground type move. Heavy Slam, Fire Punch, Rock Slide. Like these are good coverage moves on a Groudon. But I don't think Groudon with Assault Vest is something that we've really seen at all yet in Series 8. So I am really curious about how this Groudon has been trained in particular. I mean, looking at usage stats alone, Assault Vest is around 8%. So it's like... It's there, but it's just not as prominent as what we have on this team. And it's also an interesting item choice because you really don't want to be Dynamax and Groudon on this team. And it's a really interesting item choice because you really don't want to be Dynamax and Groudon on this team. And I think that having an assault vest and just like accepting that you're going to be a little bit bulkier on the offset rather than relying on Dynamax for that bulk is pretty smart. The Venusaur and the Charizard are the two Pokemon that you would want to Dynamax uh, if you're going with the Sun mode. If you're playing the Trick Room-ish mode on this team, you would probably want to run Glastriere. And I say ish because I just noticed that the Grimmsnarl has Thunder Wave, which is another valid form of speed control, quite frankly. But still, Weakness Policy Venusaur is also unique. Weather Ball on Venusaur is something that's been uh, ticking up in usage. So that's interesting to note. The Grimmsnarl and the Porygon 2 are pretty standard for what you get. I'd be curious to know why it's not Light Clay on Grimmsnarl. Uh, and instead it's Focus Sash. That's something interesting to call out. But yeah, let's um, let's take a look at the Glass Trier's moves real quick because I just realized I've been covering it the entire time. Okay, yeah, that's what I would expect for Lumberry. So yeah, let's go ahead and try this game, this team out in a battle. So real quick, Glass Trier with a Lumberry is just a really uh, 
good tech to have right now because there's Will-O-Wisp everywhere. And having Will-O-Wisp everywhere means that, especially if you're not running Misty Terrain, you really do need something to stop those burns. And honestly, with a Pokemon like last year, just getting rid of the burn once is usually enough time to pick up a knockout. So, all right, let's do this. Oh, we got knocked back down too. All right, let's go. I forgot that today's March 1st. <laughs> Even though I started my video out like, yeah, it's a new month. Let's talk about our new content strategy. <laughs> Completely forgot that uh, battle spot ratings reset. So we're going to be playing Will and this does not look like a favorable matchup for Will, but we'll see. Um, no weather control right off the bat. That's going to be important to call out. Uh, we do have one Intimidate user on the opposing side of the field in the form of that Lander Astherian. Also Galarian Moltres, Sogaleo, uh, no Necrozma, Spectriere, Tapu Fini, and Grimmsnarl. So without having much exposure to how this team quote-unquote should work, I think what I want to do is go just immediately on the Sun offense. Um, I want to bring Charizard. Actually, hold on. Does Charizard have a grass type move? It does not. All right. I still think I want to bring Charizard though. Eh. Like it's either Charizard. Yeah, no, we'll bring Charizard. And then I'm going to bring Porygon too as my last Pokemon to have a bulky switch. Um, things I'm going to watch out for. Uh, primarily the uh, Spectriere is something I'm a little bit afraid about. That's why I'm starting out with the Chlorophyll lead. Um, also, my opponent doesn't have anything obvious to mess around with weather, so I feel pretty free to send Groudon in here, and then even if I do get intimidated, just switch it out. Um, again, we're running Assault Vest, so we can afford to play this Groudon a little bit differently, uh, which is what I'm hoping to showcase as well with this setup, but... Um, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I just, like... <laughs> <laughs> just go for the turn one P blades here and just be done with it, honestly. <laughs> I I don't think the Soul Galeo stays in, but on the off chance it does, I really want to get a nice hit onto um onto whatever does come in. And I don't want to rush my Dynamax. I see no need to right now, so we'll just go for the sludge bomb into Grim Snarl. And if P Blades is kind to us, maybe we'll actually get a turn one knockout on said Grim Snarl. I don't know. My opponent could also go for like a fake out Zen headbutt here into the Venusaur. That would certainly catch me completely off guard and um, might have been something I should try and mitigate for a bit more. But I, I think I'm going to be OK. I think I'm going to be OK. So, all right. Yeah, this is fine. They're just setting up Reflect this turn. So this is fine. Also, let it be known that this is another video where I am perfectly fine until I start recording. And then all of a sudden, it's like my throat. It's just like, you know what? I'm not going to cooperate right now. It's very dry in here. So that's fun. <laughs> all right. We did get the turn one KO on Grimmsnarl. This means we only have to worry about Reflect. And honestly, especially if the Landorus comes in. And I feel like the Landorus has to come in. No, Moltres. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, all right. This isn't really what I was expecting, but I think what I feel safe doing... Uh, Solgaleo's weakness policy, isn't it? All right, we'll rock slide. We'll just go for the little bit of chip. And I'll wait for a safe opportunity to get Charizard in to sort of donk the Solgaleo, I guess. Um, I, I, I think that this is a little bit of a slow play, but again, with two Pokemon on the field that can really hurt Venusaur, I think it's better to save Venusaur for later, especially if my opponent's last Pokemon is going to be that Tapu Fini. So, I think I should also be a little bit caution cautious about... Groudon's time on the field, just so that we don't run out of drought turns, but I think that's going to be something we'll worry about a couple of turns from now. I'm hoping that we can snag a knockout before then. 
I'm also going to take a quick peek at how the speeds match up between Solgaleo and Groudon. Uh, just to evaluate if Trick Room is something I want to do. I, I don't think it is because Charizard and Venusaur are just inherently fast and that seems like that would be a mistake, but um, you never know. You never know. All right, or Air Slash, Life Orb on the Moltres, which means Sogaleo is most likely going to be weakness policy. And my opponent is also setting up Max Rockfall to get rid of the sunlight. All right, completely ignored Groudon, probably hoping that I would take the bait and go for something like a Fire Punch or a Precipice Blades to activate that Solgaleo's weakness policy. Not gonna happen. Not yet, at least. All right, so... Porygon 2 is also within KO range here, which is a little bit unfortunate because I really want to play the weather control game here. And I can't rely on Charizard to reset Sun. So I think I just have to make like a bit of a read here. Yeah. I I might be making a mistake trying to prioritize weather over um over like Venusaur and Charizard's safety, but as of right now, I really want to have the Sun and Charizard combination available to me by the end of this, so I'm just gonna cross my fingers. And hope that my opponent also did not choose to double into the Porygon 2 this turn. Okay, they did. That's fine. That's fine, because now we get now we get a uh, Groudon in, and I mean I guess my opponent's probably gonna go for another Rockfall Air Slash combo, because that's what they did last time. I do have Sleep Powder. I do have Sleep Powder, and Sleep Powder would make maneuvering this whole situation a lot easier. But I could also send in Charizard, Gigantamax, and then switch and go for the big hit. I think that's what we'll do. Again, this is a little bit risky, but... My opponent doesn't have light screen up, and I'm hoping that Sun Boosted Base 150 G-Max Wildfire is going to be enough to KO the Solgaleo. Or at least threaten the Solgaleo enough that my opponent spends their last turn of Dynamax going for a Max Guard and not a Max Rockfall. Now, alternatively, if they know this damage calc and they go for the Max Rockfall because they know they survive, then that's not great. But, uh, but I, I, feel, I feel confident enough taking this big play. If I had Protect on Venusaur, um, or alternatively, if I felt more comfortable like Dynamaxing the Venusaur right now and going for Max Guard, I think I would have done that instead of this play. But I'm just trying to count on the fact that my opponent set their bulk up on their Solgaleo so that they would have to take that take advantage of light screen in order to survive a hit like this. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe Charizard. Maybe Charizard. You know, Charizard's a pretty hyped up Pokemon, so it can get these big knockouts, right? Oh yeah, easy, easy, easy. So now that that's taken care of, and now that we have the residual damage set up from G-Max Wildfire, it should be a simple cleanup here. I don't think there's much Moltres can do to the Groudon or the Charizard, even with Fiery Wrath. Okay, yeah, they went for the Air Slash into the Venusaur, so that's gonna do nothing thanks to the Assault Vest. Uh, we do have to worry a little bit about the uh, flinch chance that Air Slash brings, but given that Moltres is going to be knocked out by G-Max Wildfire in one turn anyways, I think... I think we have this. Okay, and their last Pokemon is Landorus. So, definitely something to worry about could be scary if that is something like a uh, choice scarf Landorus that rock slide would not be uh, appreciated and there's really not much I can do to stop it uh, but the other thing that I don't want to do is switch in the Venusaur I, I think the four turns of sun I have left should be enough to take down these two Pokemon so we're just going to keep uh Groudon on the field, even though it is intimidated. Hope that G-Max Wildfire does its thing. It's not a choice Scarf Landorus, and uh, regardless if Groudon gets to attack this turn, we win. So GG's. And this is why Sun is so ridiculously powerful right now. <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, my opponent did have the right idea when it came to uh, removing the Sun with the Rockfall. It's just that 
it's really hard to keep the sun or keep the sun off the field, I should say, uh, you know, keep rain or uh, sandstorm up when you're relying on your uh, Dynamax Pokemon to set the weather and your opponent can just switch things around. And admittedly, I didn't have the best setup for switching things around. Um, the I, I kind of trapped myself on the field pretty early on with the Groudon and the Porygon too, but still, overall, uh, you really just have to play this weather game. So if you're looking for a way to counter teams like this, which is, I think, something that everybody should be keeping in mind for Players Cup in particular, if you get in, I would recommend trying to either one... Uh, set up Trick Room and force your opponent to not rely on the sun mode of the team because I think that the, given the two options, I think the Trick Room version of this team is a little bit easier to power through. Um, or two, you know, try and fit a weather setting Pokemon on your team. It doesn't have to be Kyogre, you know, Sandstorm from a Tyranitar or a Hippowdon, I guess, uh, is just as effective as Drought or Drizzle right now because we do not have the primal reversion forms. And giving yourself the ability to sort of switch weather around or even use like a manual rain dance or a manual sunny day on a Pokemon uh, is really going to be key. So I'll be showcasing a few more matches with this team this week just to give you all an idea of how it works and what you should be thinking about when either building your own team like this or trying to counter it. I'm going to try and build my own team like this just because I think it's neat. Uh, but that probably won't happen for a couple of days at least. And you can check me doing that over on Twitch. Um, I'll be streaming on Twitch tomorrow night. That's Tuesday evening starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. And we will be doing something new for the new metagame. Uh, if I'm able to get a Groudon... Yeah, okay. I have a Groudon. I don't think it's actually traded into my account yet. I think it's still on Pokemon Home, so I need to find somebody else with a crowd on. But if I get that whole situation set up, uh, maybe we'll do our own uh, sort of fast iteration on this type of team. Uh, if not, maybe we'll just go big noggin mode and start working on a Calyrex Ice team. But uh, regardless, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you all for uh, checking that out. You can find the link below in the video description. Uh, if you like this video, you can also leave a comment and tell me so, you know. I, I know that I primarily showcase metagame teams here, but I think it's really important to keep a pulse on the metagame, especially when you're uh, preparing for big tournaments, and what better way than to look at what's winning. So, that's what I do. <laughs> So yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thank you all again for watching. I really do appreciate the support and I will see you next time on a battle a day. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>